Hello everyone, my name is Anton. You're probably wondering what I'm doing here. Now I'm going to tell you more about everything, only for this, I'll need two trucks at the beginning. Now I'm glad to welcome you to the experiment on the installation of fuel sensors, and we meet our participants. Today, these masters will have to compete in the speed of installation of two types of sensors. The red team gets the conventional fuel level sensor and the blue team gets a new wireless sensor. Let's find out who will win, a time-tested standard or an innovative technology. Good luck to the teams and we are starting! Now we are watching how the second participant of the red team and the participants of the blue team start draining fuel from the tank, searching for the installation site and drilling a hole for the sensor. Meanwhile, another member of the red team leaves to install a tracker and lay a harness. Now we will find out how things are going with the red team. I see you've already started calibrating the sensor. Yes, now we will connect it to the laptop and start. What do we see? Instead of calibrating the sensor, a member of the blue team sticks to the phone. Actually, I don't stick to the phone, but calibrate the sensor because due to the new application, this can be done at a distance and through the phone. It isn't necessary to pour fuel into the sensor for calibration. No, there is a dry calibration on the wireless sensor and fuel isn't needed for this. Let's find out how things are going with the installers of the red team who are now continuing to work at the cabin. Uh-huh. Now the most important and time-consuming process of laying the wiring harness of a wired sensor is underway. while a member of the blue team easily copes with this alone. And he does it much faster. As we can see, the blue team has already finished its work and the red team has yet to finish installing the sensor and go wash their clothes. So let's fast forward to our lab and test the wireless sensor in extreme conditions. I give the floor to our chief specialist, Vladimir Alexandrovich. We are located in a laboratory where we test all our equipment before launching into mass production and throughout the product life cycle. Now I will tell you how we test our sensors, and at the same time, I will try to dispel your concerns related to the Escort TDBLE sensor. The testing process includes several stages. The first stage is a fuel consumption simulation stand. The next stage of verification is a thermal camera. Let's now see together what happens to the sensor in the thermal chamber. Each of the sensor undergoes temperature tests to 50 degrees above zero Celsius. We often hear from you that the TDBLE sensor itself and its battery will not work in the northern regions. Before choosing a battery, we conducted experiments and testing with various manufacturers and settled on SAFT, because during the test it proved to be better than the others at low temperatures, due to the use of such a chemical combination as lithium thionyl chloride. Discharge and reduction of capacity at negative temperatures is the smallest of the manufacturers on the market. We have a direct contract with the battery manufacturers, which allows us to talk about their authenticity. The advantages of the soft battery are high specific capacity, the lithium thionyl chloride bundle has low self-discharge current, short circuit safety, 
which is confirmed by the presence of a European certificate and our tests. The battery will not burn, will not explode. The next stage of testing is a vibration stand. Then at the testing stage in this salt chamber, we check the corrosion resistance of the products under the influence of a specially created salt mist, as well as the resistance of the product to a humid atmosphere with an increased salt content during operation. The final stage is to check the linearity of the sensor, as well as the dead zone and smoothing on the activator. We have witnessed the testing of the Escort TDBLE sensor. Thank you, Vladimir Vladimirovich. Well, we'll summarize the results. The wireless sensor is reliable, easy to install, and most importantly, since 2018, it has been proving its reliability and efficiency, unlike the products of competitors who are just entering the market. This is not just another novelty. It is an evolutionary technological leap into the wireless future of transport telematics, which will significantly save time and money on installation and maintenance. Well, the main thing that I realized is that I no longer want to work as a presenter. I'm getting a job in escort group of companies. After all, it is much easier to install wireless sensors than to conduct experiments on their installation. You can see for yourself.